Hello everybody, Akra here, and um, yeah, welcome to a new series called Let's Talk, and as you can guess by the house, um, in this particular um, Let's Talk About Games, we're talking about microtransactions. Now, I'm not against microtransactions in any way, and in personal opinion, I believe microtransactions are good for not only just the game industry, but also for us as gamers. The problem is that I believe sometimes we use microtransactions to um, be lazy. And as, a, as an old school gamer in some degree, I don't agree using, of using microtransactions to be, um, you know, to get stats or to um, pay to win. In my opinion, this whole pay to win style is just, it's kind of bad in my opinion because, um, you know, especially for microtransactions, because it means that many gamers are going to use this as a way to um, basically, you know, become stacked up, become the greatest player without ever having to do me much work. And to me, that is a, um, a big issue. I don't believe that should be the way we should play video games, and I personally believe that's just a... It's kind of, in a sense, the developer's way of saying, Hey, we don't mind you cheating. We are going to let you cheat. All you have to do is spend X amount of money to um, basically become a stacked character without ever having to do much work. Like I said, I'm not against microtransactions. And I believe microtransactions are good for the player and they're also good for the, the gamer in general. Or, sorry, say, it's good for the company, and it's also good for the player in general. But the problem is, many of us use these microtransactions to be lazy gamers, to say, hey, we already have the greatest stat character, because we spent, like, $200, $300 just to become this stacked. And, you know, like I said, I believe that that's not the way many of us gamers should be playing a game. Ella should be playing the game in general. In fact, we play video games to have fun, but we also play video games because they are a challenge. They make it, they make it so that we can have a difficult time, a understanding of how the mechanics work, how everything works. Now, like I said, I am not against microtransactions. To be honest, I believe microtransactions are good, but you know they have to be done correctly. For instance, NBA 2K has a notorious bad way of developing or showing off microtransactions. Now, again, I don't believe this is a problem, too much of a problem, but I do believe that the problem with their version of microtransactions is not only can you get X um, clothing, but you also can use these this money, this real life money, to grant your virtual currency to. <laughs> Sorry about the sneeze there. But you can use the virtual currency to not only get more clothing, but also to get um, your stats stacked up. And to me, this is not good for microtransactions. While, yes, it does give the company a, um, a great profit margin, it doesn't give you, the gamer, the challenge that you want as a gamer. And as a gamer, I find that many of us who call ourselves gamers are only gamers because we used microtransactions to become completely stacked. Now, like I said, how do we make this microtransaction work for our video games? Well, of course, you don't want it to become a point of people can just buy their stats um, with real money. This doesn't create an atmosphere for gaming that I agree with, that I like. And personally, I find that most of these people who play that way are only playing that way so they can say, hey, look, I got a completely stacked and the greatest player ever in the game, in the game, and I didn't even have to do a whole lot of work. But I do believe that we can do microtransactions in the right way and in the right fashion. So what is the right fashion? Well, let's just go back to NBA 2K18 as, or NBA 2K as an example. With NBA 2K18 coming out, I hope that this doesn't become a big problem, but I know that microtransactions will still be a part of the game. And, you know, as it is in real life, 
The gaming industry is thriving off microtransactions. It's their greatest profit margin, and by all means, I agree to it. I like that they're uh, thriving off it. But at the same time, I believe us gamers need to stop buying, buying for the impulse of becoming the greatest player out there without having to do much work, without having to do much practice. Um, so how do we fix this? Well, let's just say, for instance, NBA 2K again. Let's go back to this, and also, I'll show you another example of microtransactions and how it could be good for our community and us as gamers. But, um, with NBA, for instance, let's say, you know, it would be good to have the microtransactions for most of the appeal, and also, for instance, let's say we have, for instance, maybe Magic Jordan as a playable character for our team. He becomes a free agent. So, you know, it's like, okay, NBA 2K comes out with Michael with um, Michael Jordan, for instance. And let's say he costs you 200000 VC, or virtual currency, which is the NBA 2K virtual currency, as far as I remember. And you can either pay 200000 virtual currency, or you can go into, like, for instance, the PlayStation Store, the Xbox Live Store, and pay... Like, let's say, $40. $40 for Michael Jordan. Because, let's just say, the, the VC equals up to about 200000 at $40. You know, for instance. And, um, that would be a good way to have microtransactions while still making it to where the gamer, the gamer, a.k.a. me or someone like you who's watching this video, feel like, hey, I got a, great, a cool character for this amount of money, for 200,000 um, VC, in, or I paid $40 for it. But let's just say you didn't want to pay the $40 for it, and let's say it was 200,000 VC. Well, with the microtransaction and having VC, like going back to NBA 2K, you know, we could, um, basically, you know, NBA could make it to where, or 2K could make it to where, like, let's say 200,000 VC costs about, uh, I don't know. $20. $20. You got a great deal. In this case, not only is the microtransaction working, but you as a gamer got a great deal. And hey, guess what? The, the game companies, you guys are also making great money because you got a way, you got two ways of buying the, um, you know, this so-called special character. And, you know, I believe that's a great way for the game company and you as a gamer to survive, to thrive, and become... And to make the, you know, game industry better. Especially for us gamers. Because some of us are with gamers. We don't agree to this whole pay-to-win style. We don't like the whole pay-to-win style. And while we're not against microtransactions, we just want to see the microtransactions done correctly. For instance, um, as you can see, I'm just using Paragon as our example video to film the time, especially while I'm doing this video. But, um... <clears throat> You know, Paragon, they do a great job of the microtransactions because they have the v, the, the gold coins or their, their virtual currency, their Paragon coins, being just for um, skins, just for exclusive skins, just for, you know, little things like loot crates and stuff. And they're making, and you can buy loot crates and stuff as well as loot crate, crate keys. And they're making a big profit margin out of this. To be honest, I'm actually glad that Paragon, even though I don't agree with Paragon, even though I don't personally, you know, I have my disagreement about Paragon and I will be putting out that video, you know, they do microtransactions correctly because it's an even playing ground. And it's a playing ground where nobody, um, no gamer can say, hey, look how, how stacked my character is just because I used all this real life money to, to create that stacked player. And, you know, that's good for the gaming industry, as well as Paragon makes money off it. But, to say that, let's go back to NBA 2K again, for as the example. To say that we are going in with NBA 2K and, you know, you buy VC, which is their virtual currency, and you can also stack your character because of that. That's not good for the gaming industry. In my opinion, that's really not good for the gaming industry. And at this point, it's really, 
take advantage of you as the gamer and as and it's also making it to where you being a gamer no longer requires the hard work requires the practice you can pretty much stack up your character with um you know absolutely no work required and like i said this does not build well nor is it good for the gaming industry because you know we um only end up not having you know people who never want to put in the work people who never want to put into practice and just want to have the best stacked character for online so they can get the best rank and for me like i said as far as the microtransactions go i don't believe in that i don't think it's good for us as gamers and i don't believe it's good for us to continue that process so i mean you know like i said i would like to see microtransactions be more for perks more just for little bonuses you know or just like skins and all that and maybe like special characters that you may not be able to get with just um with just um you know with just this virtual currency and I would rather prefer to see you have to work hard for the VC or you have to work hard for all this extra stuff that you may not, um, that, that, you know, that with the current way of some microtransactions, you don't even have to do. And personally, that's how I see you, you being able to maybe fix the microtransactions and make it to where microtransactions actually work better. And are better for um, for not only us as gamers, but also for you as um, for you as a game developer and you as a game company. And I mean, you know, that's what I want to see personally going forward. And I believe this is not this is not too hard of an idea. I and I believe that we can still see great benefits as gamers, but also um, great better benefits as um and you could see um maybe great profit margins come out of just um you know having all these little special things that you may not ever be able to get with other than paying money or the buying the virtual currency um for the game and you know i think that personally would make the game um the game industry and video gaming better for everyone because like I said I believe in the microtransactions I think the microtransactions are good are good but you know microtransactions are just not good in a way of letting it be to the point where you can stack your character um, just based on you know completely just based on um, you know you know um, you know, buying virtual currency and then leveling up your stats. That's not good for microtransactions, nor is it good for gamers or the gaming industry in general, in my opinion. So, um, yeah. And let me show you um, some of the things that have been going on with Fallout 4 ever since their latest update. So, yeah. Give me one. Alright then. So, um, yeah. I'm going to show you a small clip of what's been going on with Fallout 4. And um, how they are starting to use microtransactions. Now, many people in the Fallout 4 or Fallout um, think Bethesda is just um, doing this as a way to make more money. But to be honest, I feel that um, Bethesda really is considering or thinking about a way to increase the longevity of their um, projects. As you can see here, this is the Creation Club, which is... Fall Force though microtransaction um, layout and as you can see there are loads of little things that can be added to Fall Four. Now in a sense these are mods, but they do add a little bit of um, extras to Fall Four and I believe this is how microtransactions should be done. Now the question remains is this war friendly? Not all of it is. Not all of it is. Some of it, um, some of the stuff you see in the Creation Club isn't really that more friendly. So, if you're really looking for something that's more more friendly, I would highly suggest for Fallout 4 um, players, um, look into, um, you know, 
playing PC version or playing a um, Xbox version as as the PlayStation 4 version really won't have anything, at least in my opinion, that is so-called quote-unquote Fallout more friendly. But, um, <clears throat> in my opinion, I believe that that is microtransactions done somewhat correctly because it gives you special things that you're never going to be able to access just by, um, for say, playing or um, playing the game normally. And like I've said before, I find that this is a way to do microtransactions correctly um, without having to, um, you know, make the gamer feel like, oh, I'm going to become super op overpowered or super stacked, super stacked with just by buying these things, and in a sense, you really don't. Now, I will um, say this much. Fallout 4's Creation Club items, some of them are a little overpowered, some of them are just a little bit too powerful for um, for the game, Because, but at the same time, you know, like I said, these are some, some of the stuff in Fallout 4 Creation Club are stuff that you're never going to be able to get just by normal playthrough, just by normal, um, you know, normal vanilla gameplay. But, like I said, for the game industry and just in the way that Bethesda has done this, I believe they are doing microtransactions correctly. Now, <clears throat> if we were to talk with, like, Destiny, for instance, I've not been on Destiny for a long time. But I do know that Destiny has gone to a microtransaction layout. Now, did they do a good job on it? I cannot tell you for sure. Um, honestly, I would have to have one of my, um, one of my friends tell me um, one way or another if the microtransactions are good for um, Fallout 4 and its community. But I will say that in my opinion, I believe Destiny um, didn't do microtransactions as a way to make yourself super OP, super stacked. But, again, like I said, I'm unfamiliar with Destiny ever since um, ever since The Taken King came out because that's when I decided to stop playing Destiny because I didn't want to buy Taken King and mostly that, that was because I was like, I didn't really feel feel for it. I wasn't really feeling it. I wasn't really feeling the 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 take on Destiny. Now, I will have a, a completely different game uh, or video on Let's Talk Destiny, but we're not going to focus on Destiny today. I just thought that I'd talk about a little bit about Destiny and how it did go in John Michael transaction layout. Anyway, <clears throat> as you can see, with Fallout 4 Creation Club, I believe they're doing microtransactions correctly. Same goes with Smite, um, you know, because Smite, they've also had microtransactions, and mostly it's just for um, getting emotes, getting, um, and also getting um, skins and stuff that you may never be able to get through normal means. And this is good for the um, community, as well as it's good for the gamers. Now, why do I say this is good? Well, it's mostly because, um, you know, we as gamers like having the exclusive stuff that we can't get through normal methods. And I will tell you, I love having exclusive skins, exclusive vehicles, or things that just no way else can get because, um, you know, because I have to spend money for it. But at the same time, you know, like I said, as an old school gamer, as someone who doesn't like the pay to win style, you know, we don't want games that require us to buy or to use money just to stack up our character, just to make our character's stats on par with anyone else. And, you know, again, that's just the problem with the microtransaction community. Many of us, or main, main companies, have a little bit of a pay-to-win style because of the fact that they want to make sure that you spend money um, just so that you can um, get the best stuff and actually beat your opponent. In my opinion, this is not good for the community. And um, you can take, you can look at my old stream on Twitch, on Twitch of, of Gwent, of Gwent, which is the Witcher card game. And I really believe that that game could have been much better. 
But unfortunately, you know, they they thrive. Um, the Witcher card game, aka Gwent, it thrives on pay to win. It thrives on you having to spend money just so that you can get the best cards and just so that you can do get everything to beat your opponent no matter what. And like I said, that is just not good for the gaming community, nor is it good for um, the gamer. It's good. It's great for the game company. Now the game company is going to thrive off it. It's great for the game company. The game company is going to just wrap in the dollars, and they're just going to keep seeing sale after sale. But unfortunately for us gamers, it's a rip off. For us gamers, it's a rip off, and it's making us kind of go, "Ah, oh, man, we have to spend money just to do, you know, just to become good enough to beat the game, just to become good enough." And that is bad for us as um, as gamers. But for the game company, if I was a game company, you know, for me it doesn't matter. I'm I'm seeing the dollars roll in, you know. But um, you know, like I said, as a Twitch streamer and just a gamer in general, and kind of a gamer in general, it's not good for us because you know it means that we have to spend five. 20, 30, maybe even $300 just to become the best that we can become. And like I said, that's not good. But, you know, again, if you look at games like Smite, games like, um, <clears throat> games like, um, Neverwinter, um, these games, while they are also free to play, their microtransactions are actually good because. You get exclusive items. You get things that you may never be able to get through normal progression. And like I said, this is good for the community. This is good for the gamers, and it's also great for all of us. Because not only are is money going to be coming into the coming in for the company, money is also being well spent for us as gamers. And that's the way I believe um, we should pretty much um, continue the microtransactions. Now, of course, there are subscription-based video games. And these subscription-based video games are also working in their own fashion because they, they are a month-to-month -month VIP membership. And, you know, again, this is still great for the company. In fact, I really hope that um, more free-to-play games start thinking about this whole VIP membership. Because, it's good for the company, and while it still is a microtransaction, you're still more make make um big bucks for it, big um earnings for it, and I believe that going back to NBA 2K, um, I believe this is something that NBA should consider is a VIP membership. Now, what does this VIP membership include? Well, I mean, that's up to the company. But if I had to, um give you an idea of what this VIP membership could include for NBA 2K, for instance, I personally believe that should be something like, uh, you get a 150% um, <clears throat> boost to your experience and um, use of being able to um, get more stats. So you get uh, like 150% boost for to use for more stats. And with every game you play, you, you continue to get that 150% boost on that can work towards your stats. You get um, maybe like every month or every week X amount of VC or virtual currency. And also maybe you get like exclusive access to a, to a VIP court. A VIP court or a VIP server that nobody else on NBA 2K um, can access. And, you know, to me, that would be great. And, you know, you can have it to where there's a lifetime VIP membership, so it'll go game to game to game to game to game, or it's a month-to-month -month VIP access, where, um, you know, it still will go game to game to game to game to game, but you can still charge X amount of money to keep that VIP membership going every month, every month if you so wished. And, you know, like I said, for microtransactions, that's great. That would be, you know, excellent for microtransactions. Not only are you the, you the game company making money, 
but it makes the gamer feel like, hey, I got something that nobody else can get. I got something that nobody is going to have through normal methods, you know. And, you know, again, like I said, that's great. I mean, look at um, Four Kings um, Slots and Casino, which is uh, another free to play game. Every, there is a way to earn your way into the, <coughs> into the VIP lounge. And it is a tough way to get in. But if you um, get in, it's great. Because you have access to VIP games. And you also um, are able to um, do things that... Or play games and things that... And get items that nobody else is able to get. And, um, sure, the microtransactions there are pretty much, you have to pay more money to get more chips and whatnot, and, but, but, you know, like I said, for anyone who is just looking for a way to maybe have something exclusive, it's great for the game. And for you, the game company, it also works great. And that's the way I believe microtransactions should be handled. Now, I do apologize that this is a bit of a ramble and a bit of a, a little, little lesson of let's talk about me and microtransactions, but I personally believe this is how we should do microtransactions moving forward into the future. Now, I know that this is a bit of a, talk, a, long, a long talk. I'm going on to about 27 minutes, and I'm looking at the video layout, it's about 30 minutes, so... You know, I know this is a bit of a long talk, but hopefully for you gamers and maybe even for the game industry, this is giving you some ideas of how I believe we can fix microtransactions while still having them. Because I do believe in the microtransactions. I think the microtransactions are good if done correctly. If not done correctly, then, you know, we end up having microtransactions that are just, you know, for me as an old school gamer, Seems like a waste of money. Seems like, why do we even spend that much money just to, just to, um, you know, get this one benefit that's not even useful, which we could have gained by a load of hard work. And, I mean, you know, that's the problem we, we stand on with a lot of these, um, microtransactions going into the future. But personally, I'd love to hear your thoughts if you have any thoughts about what I've talked about, if you want to maybe give me something to think about, because personally, I don't know it all. This is just my opinion of microtransactions and how I believe we can have better gamer-to-game -game company relationships with microtransactions, because I believe the microtransactions are great, not only for the game company, because you guys are making more money, but it's also good for us gamers, because it gives us a reason to kind of go, well, we should support this um, these this game a little more. We should support this game company. And I mean, you know, like look at so like um, look at Warframe. It's um they do microtransactions great, and they do it in the in the best fashion that they can because they have the Prime Vault, and the Prime Vault gives you access to a um, Prime Warframe that you you'll probably not be able to get. Unless you work extremely hard for it. But they also make it to where you can get the premium currency for more vanity items. And, and weapons that you may not be able to get unless you worked extremely hard. Now of course the um, vanity items and some of the prime weapons you can get for free. But of course it takes a lot of work. And sometimes that load of work can be a little bit repetitive. It can be a little hard. So of course, you know, I feel that Warframe does a great job with our microtransactions because while well, they say hey we have it out there for free if you don't mind doing the repetitive questing stuff but they still make it to where it's readily available for anyone who just says eh, I don't feel like doing all that work I don't feel like doing every little aspect to get that item just for free so I mean Warframe does a great job with that and because of that um, I feel that um, Warframe has actually done a good job with what they've done. Anyway, um, I've been rambling for long enough. I think you guys kind of get the ideas of my opinions on how we can fix the microtransaction period. But, like I said, if you have anything that you would like to say, or if you 
have anything that may um, be a little bit of a thought for me, um, great, because these are my personal opinions on what I think we could do with um, video games and the microtransactions in general. But anyway, thank you everyone for watching me. If you guys like this video, um, please do consider um, sharing it with your friends. Otherwise, um, I will be back with another Let's Talk video eventually. But yeah, thank you everyone for watching me. Until the next one, uh, this is Zachary, signing out.